Rahu Kamir for Punch Out Boxing. I'm delighted to be here with Hamza. I've got to always say this, the man who launched my media career <laughs> back at Huddersdon. So, uh, yeah, um, well and truly into the world scene. Uh, Liam fought for a world title, gave a good account of himself and quite a puncher. So you're in the danger zone. No, for sure. For sure. But that's where great fights come from. That's where great fighters come from. That's where um, moments in the history but come from as well. So I'm really looking forward to December 2nd for sure. Uh, tell us how, how the fight come about. Were a number of options presented to you? Um, what was the reason for this? Is it because of the jeopardy he brings? Uh, to be fair, it was probably the easiest fight that's ever been made in my career. It was no beating around the bush. It was uh, within 24 hours, signed, sealed and done. There you go. Boom, boom. Happy days here. You're fighting Liam Williams now. So um, credit to him and his team for, for making it so smooth and making it really simple. It just goes to show that he's about his business and he's going to definitely come come to rip up the whole Hamza Shiraz pretty boy, golden boy look. Uh, but I can't afford for that to happen. I've got too much to lose. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're under no illusions. This probably is his last chance to hit the big time and be like an upcoming prospect like yourself catapults him back in so yeah you're you're up against it potentially for sure for sure and i'm under no illusion as well i know i know what it's going to take to to beat this guy to beat liam williams uh it's going to take 100 percent i'm just sure i can't afford no slip ups but these are the fights that you kind of get up for you know what i mean they could have easily bought a foreign over and just kept me going in the rankings until i get into a mandatory position but it's not about that so you're in a you're in a great division you got Fighters who almost like need the opportunity to prove themselves once again, which is which puts them in a dangerous position because uh, they bring everything. And it's the same for me. I'm, I'm, I've got to prove that Frank Warren's back the right man. Um, my team's back the right man. I'm not wasting no one's time. And yeah, that I'm serious about winning world titles. Yeah, and uh, psychologically, how much you have to prepare for the fact that you could well get hit harder than you've been in your career because like I said he is a proven puncher yeah. no for sure but like I said I'm, I'm, I'm under no illusion we know what he brings he's a knockout artist strong tough rugged um, and the good thing is we've got time to prepare for that um, I've had it in my career before but not to this level um, and like I said I'm going to take it all in my stride enjoy it learn from it and uh, hopefully it will put me in good stead for when I do fight for world titles. I can say, listen, I've been in the ring with this guy, that guy and whatnot. And I've ticked all them boxes. Can, can you actually psychologically prepare for that? Or is it something that every fight you just have to go through it and then see how you cope? Yeah, it's one exactly what you just said. It's not, you can't really think, OK, cool. If I get hit with a right hand, this is how I'm going to deal with it. It's not one of them. It's like if you get smacked with a right hand, you don't know where you're going to be. You could be still where you are. You could be on the floor. You could be on the other side of the ring. Who knows where you could be? Um, so yeah, it's one of those you kind of deal with it as it happens, but you gotta make you you gotta understand that in this fight as well. But even in my other fights, well, it's always been a possibility. Obviously, I got knocked down in that fight against Torres, so it's always been a possibility. And if you switch off against people, it always comes back to bite you in the ass. So uh, did you? Well, I presume you did see uh, his last couple of fights um, against top level guys. Eubank. I mean, he, I spoke to his coach Gary. He said. He, did, he didn't do the, the weight properly for that. Um, Andrade, like you said, quite a tall fighter. Do you take anything from that or do you think he'll come totally different with you? Totally different. Totally different. They all do when they fight me. They come on their A game. They come on their A game and they got, you got to understand it's, their, it's his last chance. So he's coming with everything. He's coming with everything. You'll probably see the best version of him, to be fair. And that's a good thing because when I do beat him, I want full credit for it. I don't want, oh, you beat a, a Liam, um, Liam Williams who's... who's, who's kind of like going down the hill you know, not that version you fought a top version an honest version and you, you beat him indeed and uh, just finally uh, how's it feel to be headlining locally at the Copper Box it? looks alright doesn't it <laughs> now it's a good feeling and I'm forever grateful thanks to Mike Allah for allowing me to be here today and allowing me to to get to this level it's what when you're a kid you dream of being here you know what I mean you dream of being here and it's now, now it's about continuing that rise slowly but surely Indeed. Inshallah, 2024 is the year. Inshallah, inshallah. The year of world titles, but December the 2nd first. All right. We'll see you uh, in December.